Okay, I'm Ed Byers, I'm doing a PhD in SAITS. I'm going to give a very brief whirlwind tour of this kind of up and coming area of the water energy nexus. You can call it an energy water nexus also if you want. Uh, really, it's, it's all the interactions between energy and water, and it seems as people look into it, they're much more becoming much more prominent uh, than we previously thought. And if there's a take home message for this presentation today, is that we don't really want a situation like that, which is in Arizona. Uh, it's the Central Arizona Project. They transport thousands and thousands of megalitres every day, more than 500 kilometres, all the way to Phoenix in Arizona, pumping it up something more than a thousand metres. The amount of energy this uses, the amount of water that is lost from the Colorado evaporation is huge. Um, oh, yeah. So uh, these are just a few of the issues. Uh, there's all the public water supply, which is about half the water that we use in the UK for treatment distribution, that's lots of pumping. There's also the energy involved in just the way that we use our water, and the biggest one is hot water, and we'll talk more about this. Uh, there's also things like washing machines. These use water and they also use energy. Um, there's also wastewater treatment, and this can go in many ways, and hopefully it's going to become increasingly less energy intensive. And Tom Curtis will always tell you that there's more energy embedded in wastewater than uh, we actually need to be able to treat it. It's just working out how to do it. Uh, there are industrial uses of water, usually for cooling and also for cleaning. And agriculture in the UK, we don't use a lot of agriculture uh, in, in aggregate totals in the UK for agriculture, especially compared to other countries, but with climate change and increasing water pressures in the southeast and the east, uh, the fight for water will get increasingly competitive. On the other side, we can get lots of water, we can get lots of energy out of water, so thermoelectric generation, which I'll also talk about, use for cooling, hydropower, which is usually a good thing in the UK, not necessarily elsewhere, biofuels, uh, bringing water or the export of water from countries all over the world to the UK and any biofuels that we import, and uh, refining and processing usually of fossil fuels and mining and, and shale gas. Be under no mistake, it's a very bad news for water. Um, so hot water, 35 megatons of CO2 every year, which is a huge amount, it's actually more than all the water industry combined goes into heating the water that we use in our showers uh, and, say, washing our dishes every, every day. And people were a bit unaware of this. In the UK, it's actually about 5% of our CO2 emissions just comes from hot water, so everyone should take <coughs> shorter showers. Otherwise, we need to look for alternative ways of heating uh, our water, say, so the thermal, micro-CHP, which may be more efficient. District heating and uh, ground and air source heat pumps, which is essentially three. So that's the graph. We can show on the left is really the amount of demand for heating hot water at the moment. At the top, we have a very high water demand in the future in the 2050s with very low amounts of solar thermal. So it's basically a 150% increase in the energy using for hot water. And the opposite, if we are very ambitious, we could have very high levels of solar thermal, you know, about 10 square meters on all our roofs, very low water demand, and we'd actually not really need any energy uh, input because we could all get it from the sun. Lastly, a bit about electric power. Um, if Chris Hume had his way, the energy system in the future in the UK would probably look on the left, and we look the units on the wrong. So basically, about a third of renewables, a third of nuclear, and a third of uh, fossil fuels with carbon capture and storage. The renewables, probably good. The nuclear, okay. In the UK, we don't cool our nuclear power stations with uh, fresh water, they're only based by the sea. So it's not really an issue besides tsunamis. Um, but in France, where they have a lot of nuclear power stations on the border with Germany, on the rivers, cooling the power stations, especially in the drought of 2003, became a real issue and they had to shut a lot of them down. And lastly, uh, <coughs> Uh, coal and gas with carbon capture and storage uses about or abstracts about half of the water in the UK, um, which is obviously returned at sometimes a lower quality. Now, the general technology 
is becoming more efficient and we're using less water or abstracting less water. The only problem is, is that these closed systems and the power stations actually uh, consume more water. So whilst the abstraction is less and then they return a lot, they're consuming more water and they're evaporated a lot. So depending on our energy system, 